Hello, everybody, and greetings from Las Vegas. Um, most people on an evening in Vegas will be going out to do gambling, drinking, and whatever. I'm going to hang out and share with you everything that I have been learning. Well, a lot of what I have learned over the weekend. Um, I think I have the book that we're using is about the same size as the book that you guys are using for HI215. And I have coded all of the exercises in that book. I have done about as much coding this weekend as you guys have done all quarter. It's been pretty intense, but wow, I have learned a lot. And I am more excited now than ever about ICD-10. Um, I apologize for the format of this because... Yeah, I just, you know, after learning all this, I decided I really wanted to update this to give you guys the, you know, up to the minute up to date things about ICD-10 and, you know, tech support was not able to support me while I was out of town on doing my usual format. I was in touch with them earlier today and this was the best alternative that they could come up with. So pardon me for if my hand is a little bit shaky, I'm kind of living on caffeine and um, just wanted to give you guys the up-to-date information. I'm going to be doing two videos. The first one is going to be for ICD-10-CM and this is used only for diagnosis codes in um, any type of setting. So the CM, the, cl the clinical modification, remember we have the ICD and you guys remember from week one that's the international classification of diseases. 10 is for the 10th revision. CM is the clinical modification by the United States. ICD-10 CM is the only version, or the United States is the only nation using this version. The, Can the Canadian version, theirs is ICD-10 CA, and other, other nations have their own clinical modifications. Um, the official implementation date for ICD-10 is going to be October 13th, or I'm sorry, October 1st of 2013, and on that date, that is when everybody in the entire nation is going to be switching to ICD-10. Now, I want to kind of explain this to you guys because a lot of people are, you know, really nervous about thinking, well, why are we learning ICD-9 now when ICD-10 is coming up? And then also, there's another thing where once ICD-10 hits October 1st of 20, 2013, ICD-9 is not going to be gone. There's going to be audits going on on previously coded cases. So we still need to know the old coding system as well. Um, going to be giving a presentation tomorrow afternoon. It's going actually two back-to-back -back presentations for a work group that I'm on. I'm the co-chair of the HIMA Academic, Academic Transition Work Group for ICD-10. And we have put together a timeline and um, I wish I had tech support that I'd be able to put this up for you guys to show you my presentation. Um, I'll see if they'll be able to do it for me later on in the week without any audio. But um, we've got a timeline for how this is going to be rolled out in academics, uh, academic institutions. Right now, you do not want to learn ICD-10. The recommendation right now is for current coders not to learn it until for outpatient coders, three months before October, 3rd, or October 1st, 2013, because the guidelines are completely backwards from ICD-10. Um, after this weekend, I'm going to have to get my brain reprogrammed to code ICD-9 again. Um, there's a lot of things that are different. One of the things that's different is, you know, with our table of drugs and chemicals, we've got that nice sequencing guideline where the first code you have is the poisoning, the second one you have is the manifestation, and the third one is your E code. Well, that's not going to be the same in ICD-10. Your first code is going to be your drug, and your second code is going to be your manifestation, and we don't have a poisoning code anymore. Um, for the most part, everything is pretty much the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly just flip through the book and show you how this is laid out, show you that this part is actually not too terribly scary. It's very similar to the ICD-9. Um, in the online classroom, I have some handouts. Note that they are outdated because there have been some new changes. One of the things you'll see on uh, what you're looking at right now, this is the cover of my ICD-10 book, and it says the complete official draft code set. And underneath that right here, it says 
draft. This is in no way complete. This is still a work in progress. They're still working on making the updates for the U.S. Um, clinical modification. So this is up to date as of 2009. Now, one of the things we found out that in this book, the tabular is up to date as of 2009, but the alphabetic index, they're still using the 2007 version and they're still making updates and it kind of made it interesting when we were working on our codes. So let's take a look inside of this book. When we turn to our first page, or for our first section of the book, we're going to see that we have guidelines. ICD-10-CM, official guidelines for coding and reporting, and this is a draft of 2009. You'll see that every page in this book says draft on it to let you know this is no way official. Um, this is being worked on by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services and the National Center for Health Statistics. And they are working on this along with the American Hospital Association and HIMA. Note that these are the same organizations that cooperate in developing the, gu developing the coding guidelines for ICD-10 that you guys know now. The, the guidelines are laid out just like they are what you're used to in ICD-9. So you've got that you've got that crutch right here. I want to take a look at what some of the codes look like. I'm going to move over here to the book that we've been using, and this is one of the case studies that that we did. Um, not sure how well you can see this, but this case right here, we're looking at a 19-year-old college student brought to the ER and admitted with a high fever, stiff neck, chest pain, cough, and nausea. Lumbar puncture was performed and results were positive for meningitis. Chest x-ray revealed pneumonia. Sputum culture grew pneumococcus. The patient was treated with IV antibiotics and was discharged with the diagnosis of pneumococcal meningitis and pneumococcal pneumonia. So, how do we look these up? Same way you do in ICD-9. You're going to be looking up for um, the meningitis. You're going to be looking up that term and then the subterm pneumococcal. That will give you a code that looks like this, G00.1. It, it looks up exactly the same in the code book as you would in 9. For the pneumococcal pneumonia, you look up pneumonia, subterm pneumococcal, you get a code that looks like this, J13. Now, here's our procedure code. We're going to be addressing that in the next, in the next video that I have. Next one I'm going to look at is um, somebody that had a displaced comminuted fracture of the shaft of the right humerus. And the code that we're going to get for that, we're not looking at any um, external cost codes. This is our code for our fracture. You'll see that it looks a little bit different. We have 542.351A. The format of our codes in ICD-10 is up to seven, to seven characters. They're no longer digits because we're alphanumeric. And they all start with a, with a letter, and we've got numbers as we're, as we're filling through there. Now you saw some in our previous page that we looked at that were shorter than this. This is one that's using all seven characters. Another thing that this person has is malignant hypertension. Now, that hypertension table that everybody has grown to not love so much is gone. This is the first code that I have memorized. Remember I said never memorize codes, but our code for hypertension is I-10. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in our code book. Bear with me while I turn the page here. We don't have a hypertension table anymore. We go to our alphabetic index, and here it is, hypertension. Now, you see we have benign essential and malignant in parentheses. We had our nice documentation that said malignant, but anymore it doesn't matter. Next code we're going to look at is this S42.351A. And when we go back to that towards the back of the book, you see that we have the S42.351 for a displaced comminuted fracture of the shaft of the humerus. And you see we go as specific as the right arm. That's one thing that's new with ICD-10 is it provides laterality for paired organs. So where did I get the A for that code? Well, to get that, we went to the page before that, and you see we have this nice place here that says the appropriate seventh characters to be added to all codes from this category. And then you have these. So with this person right here, we had the initial encounter for the closed fracture. Now, one thing I want to point out, we're going to go back to here. Um, 
These are some OB cones that I had done, and you'll see in my not so nice writing here, I have an X in here before our last digit. Um, and that X is a placeholder. Okay, we're at the end of this video. Our next one's going to be PCS.